tuck away a second pair of shoes with wooden soles. I made a bundle of it and the barks was standing on stilts. I took this out and I put it under the uh, bark. I hid it under the bark in order to be able to, in the appropriate situation, to be able to throw it over to my friend. Someone must have done the very same thing before me and when the couple inside noticed that her bundle of, was thrown over, he came out, he, I was just standing outside, he came out and he accused me of uh, throwing over a bundle. I denied originally, and, but it didn't help me. He started to beat me severely and uh, after taking me into the uh, latrines, whatever you want to call it, a, a, a toilet room. Yeah, which was covered with snow inside and, and ice, not so much snow, but ice inside. He put the floor in with his uh, feet, trampled on me, on my head, and uh, when I came back half alive, no one recognized me that it was me, because my head was swollen and black. After being in this uh, barracks for two or three weeks, we were moved over to a different uh, bark which was in front of the uh, camp. Now in this bark, the uh, bark Alteser, who was also a German, what he designed devilishly, we had uh, also many non-Jews in this camp. I think the majority were non-Jews. He designed, uh, he put five beds which were triple beds. He put them at the wall of the bar and he closed those beds with barbed wire. Inside the bar, he closed those beds with barbed wire. We had to sleep eight people in one bed. That means 24 people had to sleep in those three beds. There were five of those beds, and especially for the Jews. Uh, it was impossible for eight people to sleep in those uh, beds, and we had to take shifts. Yeah, four people slept uh, a few hours, and uh, the other four we had to change, stood next to the bed, and the other four went and slept uh, a few hours. At four o'clock in the morning, this uh, animal, he took a hose with cold water and sprayed those five Jewish beds with freezing cold water. Now, uh, I think it's hard to, to describe how uh, one could feel uh, not sleeping all night and being dosed with uh, freezing water four o'clock in the morning. This happened each and every day until the uh, final evacuation from Flossenburg, which took place on the 15th of April 1945. Again, it was not yet the final evacuation, it was only the Jewish evacuation. It was a Monday, April 15th, and uh, they announced early morning that the Semplicher Juden Antreten, which means only the Jews should assemble at the uh, place, counting place, in front of uh, the, uh, in the camp. They uh, assembled us Many of uh, the Jewish inmates dared to stay behind after they escaped the next journey. Although the, uh, some of the Poles told on them, or wh whatever they could find to point out a Jew, they found they did, uh, they did it eagerly and with uh, smiles on their face whenever they could point out a Jew to uh, an assessment. But I have a friend of mine uh, here in this country who uh, was also in Flossenburg and uh, he did not join our group and he stayed alive and he was liberated by the American army in this camp just a few days after we were evacuated. When we uh, assembled in the camp before leaving uh, they counted us and uh, I think we were about uh, 25 or 2800 uh, Jews that left this camp. 
They took us on plus book was uh, on a very steep hill. This was also the name of book, which is a uh, hill of bark. Uh, this was the name of uh, this is the reason why it was called Flossenburg. And uh, we walked down to again to the rail station. They assembled us at the station, and uh, we didn't again believe uh, that we are going to be transported further away, because we knew very well that the American army here is only uh, a few miles away. Nevertheless, uh, they put us on this train. This train was uh, half open cars and half of the train, about half, were closed, closed cars. Myself, I was unlucky and I was placed in a closed car. Why do I say I was unlucky? Because uh, the American planes noticed this train and they started to bombard the uh, train. Now what they did, they saw in the open cars, they saw the inmates, therefore the open cars were not touched, were not bombarded. But the closed cars, they tried their best to, uh, and I'm surprised until this very day, why they were not able to knock out the locomotive the very first day, but they did not. And what happened? The SS I think I'll have to stop in the middle, huh? We are interviewing Mordecai Topol. The interviewer is Miriam Horowitz. We are uh, shooting in Teaneck, New Jersey, in the United States, and the language of the interview is in English. Mr. Topol, you were talking about uh, being in the cars and the bombings from the plane and the assessment. Yes. Uh, to retract a little bit, uh, whatever I mentioned before, I was placed in a closed uh, car, and it was a very unfortunate because uh, the pilots in the American planes noticed in the open cars, they noticed who is, uh, what the cargo is there, they didn't, they didn't touch those planes. But from the closed cars, also the SS were there with us. And when the American planes approached, the SS ran out from the cars into the fields, they pointed their guns to the openings in the cars, they wouldn't let us out. And in the meantime, the pilots, American pilots noticing that SS are running out from the cars, they bombarded those closed cars. Quite a number of people, unfortunately, were killed by American bullets. I myself, uh, although wearing uh, one or two coats on me, I had uh, a bullet scratch, luckily only scratched my uh, a bullet from a machine gun on his scratch my uh, leg and uh, it uh, healed after a few months it did uh, heal. Uh, even people who hid under the cars, behind the wheels, behind the steel wheels of the cars, the bullets pierced even those wheels and people were killed even under the uh, cars. We were on this train until and the American uh, planes uh, came back a few times a day. On Thursday, they were able to knock out the locomotive. And uh, the train had to run to a stop where we, not, we were not able to travel anymore by train. They took us out from the train and we started to march. I feel that the uh, reason why we did not march during the day because they were afraid that the American army or the planes will spot us and we lay uh, hidden in the forest, the dense forest around uh, the place where we uh, departed the train and uh, we stayed there during the day. It was uh, to a certain degree, it was a rest for us but at, at the same time not knowing still where we are headed. In the evenings, we uh, continued to march on the side of the uh, forest. 
We marched from Thursday, actually Thursday night, Friday till uh, about uh, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Then we again went into the forest till uh, a nightfall of Friday. A very unfortunate thing happened Friday at night where a hurricane, thunderous rains, a rain came and uh, everyone tried to break off some branches from the trees in order to cover himself, but to no avail, it didn't help at all. Uh, this rain continued till uh, Saturday early morning and I have to say that hundreds of people died in this forest from the